Hey guys, I'm Daniel with Dolan Bates. This is Luke. We're time on the water here at Performance Tackle. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna bring you guys in here. We're gonna show you some tips, tricks, other techniques. We're gonna have some videos with Shannon Gallagher. We're gonna have some videos with the owner, Mark. And uh, come on in, we'll show you what we got going on this week. Hello, Shannon Gallagher here, Sudden Impact Swim Baits and Fishing Reps. I'm down at Performance Tackle and we're going to talk about some cool rigging stuff, like specifically easy line through stuff that you can do at home. And uh, yeah, a lot of our baits are designed around an owner beast hook and that's kind of the first thing we recommend you try. But there's some cool ways you can rig some of our gear with a tube. So you can put a treble hook in the bottom, you can fish on real light line. You can get a little weight in there, um, and everything's kind of designed to do that. So this is our four inch shaker. I rigged this one up. This is the icicle color. It's kind of our silver side color. So uh, take this thing out in the sun, and the back starts to do all sorts of weird lemon and purple stuff. But in here, it just looks like a clear base. So for the purposes of that, what I like to remind people is when you place your tube, you want to start right in the middle of the front, kind of where the, the plastic comes in from in the mold and you wanna wind up in the top front corner of the hook slot. So you can see the tube in this bait. And we're gonna do that on a little bit bigger bait right now, and we're gonna get funky and creative with it, so. Um, these are a torpedo line, this is a four inch torpedo, and this is a five inch torpedo. The five inch torpedo is a pretty big bait, <clears throat> and it's actually one of the one of the cool things about it is it's already a popular line through bait. So what I like to do is I like to take this little number zero Phillips head screwdriver. Um, it's nice for a couple reasons. Uh, I don't lose it because it's a screwdriver. Uh, the little taper on the end is nice uh, because it cuts a clean hole. And then we're going to show you in a minute how we use that to guide the tube back. So some baits I'll start in the nose. This bait I'm going to start right in the corner that top corner of the hook slot. Um, and this is just like rigging a bait on a hook. You wanna hold the bait right between your thumb and your forefinger as you push this up. I like to look at it so you don't get to look at it this time because we're trying to get it right. And then it'll pop out right there in the middle. So if you see that, now we got our whole shot. Here's the key. So you can use model car fuel line. You can use any little straw you find. Um, this was a beach cleanup item. I was walking around on the beach and I saw this and thought, hey, I can use that. So we're repurposing it. Do you know what that is? Uh, this is one of those things from a little spritz spritz baby. Um, and this just happens to be the right diameter and it's nice and soft, so it won't mess up my line. Here's the cool part. You just take it and put it on the screwdriver. And then I push the bait up it while maintaining contact with the screwdriver. So it doesn't take any wayward lines. We kind of know where it is the whole time. And there, it's pretty much out in the hook slot. So what I'm gonna do is see it's kind of pigged our nose there. I'll push it past a little bit and then pull it out just to distress it. And then here's the easy part. Just take a pair of dikes and cut it off. What that's gonna give us <clears throat> is a clear line through our bait in a tube for our line type. The cool thing about that is uh, when you get bit on this thing, we'll tie the treble and weight on in a second here, it just slides up the line. So you can fish this thing on really light line and a small treble hook and it'll just kind of slide up the line. You're pulling on the fish. It ain't like having a big like, like a rat or something stuck in its mouth where it can really leverage that treble hook against it. I want a little bit of weight on this guy. So I've got a tungsten bullet sinker. 
You can also use a little mojo sinker. You can even use a mojo sinker for your tube if you want to get creative. If you're not familiar with that, a mojo sinker is a really thin cylindrical weight that we sometimes use for like finesse Carolina rigging uh, instead of split shotting. Here's the important thing. Treble hook technology has gotten so good in the last few years. Um, I like these. They are expensive. You don't lose them. Uh, these are extremely sharp. They got a really, really good shape to them. The bend is just right. The point is just right. And they're coated with some friction reducing Teflon hootenanny that really just gets in fish and sticks in them. The cool thing about that is there isn't much hook setting on these things. Like when you get bit and your line comes tight, you've already got a hook in the fish. There's no, there's no like, does he have it? Does he have it? Can I swing? You're just sitting there turning the handle and you feel dunk. And then the next thing you're peeling drag. So, so on this, do you want to say not, do you not set the hook? Yeah. For the most part, like I just bend the rod. Like it's kind of like fish in the top water where you don't really swing on the fish. You just wait for them to get a mouthful of it and go the other way. And then you just slowly sweep to the side while winding and it'll keep that fish from having a surface freak out and doing all sorts of stuff and just it gets them well behaved. Like you don't need to rip their face off of this. With a beast hook, by all means, break face. But with these guys, you just kind of keep winding, feel a thunk, keep your same pace. Sometimes they'll bounce off it, they'll get it the second time. Just keep winding. You can't miss them. That's, that's the whole point of this thing right here. One of the other nice things about getting a pack of these G finesse hooks is it gives you a place to put all your spare troubles. So I got a line of G finesses right here, but I can also get funky with this rigging. I can put a feather treble in it. I'm gonna stick with the G finesse for right now. You can see I got a line of them right there and everything else just sits in these. I put them inside of this box and they can sit in my backpack and I don't have to worry about getting a hook in the back. So <clears throat> now we got this whole thing in here. What you're going to want to do is find the master tine. So that's the master tine on this. A lot of these newer good treble hooks have the eye in line of one of the tines. Explain so a little more about the master tine real quick. So basically a lot of older treble hooks are a double hook with one tine welded to it. So if you're looking at those, your master tine is the eye that's perpendicular, the tine that's perpendicular to the eye. This on these style and most of the new owners, you have a tine that's in line with the eye. Uh, that's going to be important when you're rigging hard baits, and Mark can talk more about that later, but we're going to want to take that I've never known about that. And basically push our tungsten weight in there, and then we're going to want to find a position with our treble that sits right there, and then when we pull it tight, <clears throat> we wind up with that, right? My little bullet sinker's perfectly in line. Um, you don't even need a bullet sinker sometimes. Let me straighten out my treble hook here. Um, but you, you're in charge of, of basically how far back you rig this thing. I like it right there because I find most fish just kind of headshot this thing from the side and their, their target point is right there behind the gills. Um, if it were a real fish, it would fold into their mouth like that and then pop around head first. This thing rigged up like this, what you basically got is not a whole lot of clearance on the bait. Uh, and it's really, really sharp, but this is just barely in there. So when they eat this thing, it just goes like that, it separates from the bait. Um, I like this technique for freshwater fishing. I like the beast hook better for saltwater fishing, but this is really nice for green bass because sometimes you just don't get a, a bass that commits to this thing so hard that it can get that 6-0 beast. So, um, like I said, dress it up with feather trebles. You can imagine how cool this thing looks with some feathers coming out the back. It kind of has a similar effect to blades. Um, we can get super Bob Ross with it too, since this is a little baby bass color. And like right where I want that fish to eat it, at the back of the gills, we're gonna give it a little shot of chartreuse. And then back here on the tail, we'll kind of draw a big chartreuse circle around it. Give it a little bit right there at the bottom. Uh, and what that's gonna do is just give a couple little bright spots to it. If you ever watch fish swim around, one of the easiest things to look for when you're sitting there with your polarized glasses looking for fish, especially bass and bluegills, like the chartreuse tips of their fins. So, I don't know, me personally, I would go out and fish this. Uh, I also really like the line through because I can fish it on a lighter rod. So this is a 7.63 power. 
Um, if I'm fishing a beast hook, that kind of starts at four power, but yeah, this is a lighter rod. It's, it's fun. I'm not gonna dump fish. I'm not gonna pull hooks. Um, don't have to work too hard. It's a cool bait. So contrasting the torpedo, which has a deeper hook slot, and the shaker, which has a shallower hook slot. You can see now we both got these rigged up with little bullet weights. This one I got a little number eight hook in, so I'm fishing this thing on a spinning rod at like six or eight pound test, and it like gets smoked. Um, super easy, super fun stuff you can do at home. Everything you need to rig these baits from G finesse hooks, feather trebles, little micro bullet weights, tungsten weights, um, is here at Performance. They even sell these markers. Um, come on down, check them out, give it a shot for yourself. It's a, it's a fun way to fish them, you know, especially like you, you get used to a bait, you like rigging it one way, and it's nice to have an option where you can just like try something new one day, right? So, uh, that's what this is all about. We're going to go fish this. Have a good day. Thank you.